Mother's Day, I thought it was only appropriate to watch Mama, a horror movie involving a mother. Let's talk about it. Five years ago, sisters Victoria and Lily vanished from their suburban neighborhood without a trace. Since then, their uncle Lucas and his girlfriend Annabelle have been madly searching for them. But when incredibly, the kids are found alive in a decrepit cabin, the couple wonders if the girls are the only guests they have welcomed into their home. Dun, dun, dun. Ah. First of all, let's talk about the Canadian aspects of this film. We've got some big names in here. It was a fairly large production. We've got Jessica Chastain, Nikolai Coster Walden from Game of Thrones, Jamie! And it was presented by Guillermo del Toro. The two creepy children in this are both Canadian actors. The younger one is from Montreal, and the older one is from Westminster, British Columbia, as well as a few of the other supporting actors are also Canadian as well. It's a Canadian and Spanish production with a majority of the filming taking place in Canada. Some of the filming locations include Cambridge, Ontario, Hamilton, Ontario, Montreal, Quebec, and Pinewood Toronto Studios in Toronto. Go Canada! The movie is very action-packed and suspenseful right from the get-go, so they immediately kind of drag you into the story. I will be frank and first of all say that I'm not a fan of horror movies because I'm such a scaredy cat, but I can appreciate it. I thought it was very well done. Mind the basement noises, please. There are some very classic but tasteful jump cut scares, a build of anticipation to somebody breaking a chair. I also thought they did a really good job with the framing of some of the shots. If somebody, you know, raises their arm up, it just looks like a big black figure coming in front of the frame, or somebody that you saw in the background that you didn't realize they're just reading the newspaper but they're really still and then as it's kind of coming closer they move and it kind of scares you. There was a lot of like little things like that that I thought just the framing of the shot made it scary even though it was just sort of a mundane thing that was happening within the scene. I can also appreciate the very clever composition of a few of the shots. There were two scenes happening at once within the same frame and it was one continuous shot and both scenes seem very mundane, you know, just everyday occurrences. But then as you start to watch and see what's happening in the frames, you kind of figure it out and it makes it really creepy. And I was scared. I really liked the moths. They were sort of a symbol of the dark spirit. There was a consistent and lovely color palette throughout the film with some nice kind of dark earth tones that had sort of a, a creepy feel to it because you know why they were doing those tones since the whole thing sort of starts in the woods. I also really liked the intro credit sequence. I think it was a perfect amount of realistic and creepy. Most of the times it is the art department drawing these kids' drawings and I think they accomplished that in a good way. It's one thing to have an intro sequence that then that's the only significance that it plays is that it kind of is a placeholder for the titles but the drawings are something that's sort of carried through the rest of the film on the walls. There was some super creepy kid stuff that just, ugh, it was, ugh. <laughs> children. Both of the kid actors were really, really good, I thought. They were, yeah, oh god. You know, like in weird positions or crawling or moving way faster than humanly possible, which always scares the shit out of me. There was some good lighting in this film, or lack thereof. The kids would pop up to the window and their faces would be all in shadows. The one scene that I thought was really neat too is when the psychiatrist is interviewing the one child and half of the whole frame is sort of in shadows. So you can't see her eyes, you just see the bottom half of her face and she's slouched in the chair. And that's with a lot of other things too. You know, it's especially with movement, they'd be walking down the stairs and their face would go from fully being able to see their expressions to kind of in into shadows and then back out again. It was a good way to make things uncomfortable and eerie. But on the topic of lighting, there was something that sort of confused me throughout the film. Actually, there's two things that really confused me. One was that Nikolai's character, I think, was a twin. So he plays both his role and his brother, which was a bit confusing because I didn't realize that till later on. They were just saying, oh, they're brothers, they're brothers. But then it sort of became evident why they chose to make him a twin. Later in the film, it sort of, it, you get why they would have done that. But at first, it was definitely confusing. I think there's something they maybe could have done 
done to make it a little bit more obvious. But at the same time, it's nice to figure something out as the film goes on. The other thing that sort of threw me off was the timing of some of the scenes because the sun would be streaming in the windows and she'd be telling them they should go to bed or the kids would be sleeping. And I thought, is it really early morning? Are they just not awake yet? Or is it like really early evening and the sun is still out but the kids have gone to bed? It was just a little confusing. But I read actually on IMDb in one of the goofs that that's one of the things that they messed up, I guess, or was a problem. There are some very typical frustrating horror movie stuff that happens that always just makes me on edge, you know, when they're in the woods and they go at, in, at dark and it's like, why don't you just go during the day when it's nice and sunny out there? They've turned on a light and then the electricity starts flickering. They hear a spooky noise and they start going towards the noise. Then it's like, no, don't, don't go down there. Don't do that. Don't touch it. Just go back to bed and just pretend you didn't hear anything. I always think with horror movies, the less you show, the creepier it is. And they definitely ended up showing enough in this movie to sort of satisfy what people want to see, but I thought it might have been creepier if they kind of cut back on how much they showed. The imagination will always fill in the gaps. It'll always make something seem creepier than if you just show it. Who would like this? Anybody who likes horror movies, I guess, and being scared. Ooh, it says right here, an elegant and edgy thriller, which I think sums it up pretty well. It's sort of a, of a unique story. The, the shots are well done, the acting is all really good. It's just a good classic horror movie, I think. And it's neat because it's filmed in Canada. Stay tuned next Wednesday where we'll watch another non-scary Canadian film and then we'll talk about it. And hopefully you see us next Wednesday or it might mean that we died in this creepy basement. Ooh.